بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها السقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان So we are going through the verses of Surah Al-Rahman <coughs> We are about halfway through the Surah And Alhamdulillah we are going through where Allah says Last week we were talking about the verse يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything that is in the heavens, everything that is in the earth, they ask Allah. كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنٍ Everything, every day, Allah is <coughs> doing something amazing. So one day somebody is getting married, one day somebody is dying, somebody is being born. Every day, every second something is happening. <coughs> If you look at the globe today, every second an adhan is happening somewhere in the world. Every second. So it starts from, you know, the right far east, Fiji Islands, New Zealand, Solomon Islands, these kind of things. Fajr adhan goes on to Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia. <coughs> like this, every second the Adhan is happening somewhere. And before the Adhan, the Fajr Adhan starts in the Atlantic. The Duhar circle already starts from this side. So every second the name of Allah is being mentioned. The greatness of Allah is being mentioned somewhere in the world. <coughs> then Allah mentions, Allah is so great. So we should be turning to him for our needs, we should be turning to him for everything. سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا الثقلان. Soon we will attend to you, or oh, the two heavy, or oh, the two burden ones. ثَقَل So again, the word ثَقَل refers to somebody that has been burdened with something. So all the Mufassirin they mentioned that here Saqalan is referring to those two creation which have been burdened. One is the jinn, one is the humans. The same word comes in the hadith of Abu Dawud, which I mentioned in Jum'ah today. <coughs> that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentions when the sun is about to rise, ما من ملك مقرب ولا صحاب ولا أرض There is no angel, there is no cloud, there is no anything in the heavens, anything in the earth that is fearful إلا وهو أخيفة من يوم الجمعة They are fearful of the day of الجمعة that today could be قيامة except إلا الثقلين except the two creation that have burdened themselves jinn and the ins they are not bothered otherwise the rest of the creation are very fearful so why is Allah referring to them as burdened so one reason is that they have been burdened with certain commandments which they have to do and they will be answerable for that on the day of Qiyamah whether like the angels they have no choice the command which Allah has given them, they have to do it, they have no other choice but so they are angels in the sky which are doing ruku all the time, they are just in ruku 
certain angels only in sajda all the time. Once the Prophet was sitting with the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and then he said that the sky has just made a noise, and he has a right to make a noise. He has a right to make a noise. Why? ما فيها موضع أربع أصابع إلا وفيها ملك ساجد واضع جبهته لله. There is no space of four fingers in the heavens except that there is an angel there bowing down in front of Allah. Not even that much space. Not even the space of four fingers. But as the jinn. As humans, we have a bit of a choice. Either we can do the task that we have been told to do, or we cannot do it. We have a bit of a free will there. Not total free will, but you can say half free will. Ali Radiallahu was asked that how much free will does a person have? So he lift, he lifted one of his feet. He said this much, meaning, I am able to lift one feet at one time and keep it up, but I can't lift both of the feet at the same time and keep it up. Okay, I can jump, and, but he has to come back down again. But I can only do it with one feet. So that is the amount of free will, that I can do so much with my free will. But at the end of the day, I have to do what Allah has written for me. So, another reason is, that they have burdened themselves with the sins, with the mischievous things that they are calling out, the actions, the evils. So they have burdened themselves. So Allah says, don't think you are going to get away with it. Sanafruhu lakum. I will attend to you. Your time is coming. This ayah on one side is a warning to me and you that uh, whatever we are doing on a personal level Allah is watching and He will attend to us so this evil deed, this disobedience that I am doing I may think I am getting away with it but Allah knows so it's a way of boosting our taqwa so don't think that nobody is watching, Allah is watching and Allah will attend to you but if you look at Globally, it gives a lot of comfort as well. Where the oppressors are oppressing and they are getting away with it, seem to be getting away with it. The trouble makers are calling trouble, they seem to be getting away with it. So Allah says, lakum, I will attend to you. So it gives a lot of solace, a lot of comfort. That Allah, the media may not pick it up, but Allah is picking it up. The world don't seem to be aware, but Allah is aware of everything. سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ We will attend to you. <coughs> then Allah mentioned the amazing ayah. يَا مَعْشَغَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Again, O oh, the group of jinn and ins, jinn and humans. Now the fact that Allah is mentioning jinn and human also indicates that where Allah says, so which of the blessings of your Lord will you two deny? is referring to jinn and ins. Now why did Allah mention jinn first and then ins? And generally you study the Quran, Allah always mentions the jinn first. Jinni wal ins, jinni wal ins, jinni wal ins. Even in the last verse of the Holy Quran, made al jinnati wal nas. So Allah always mentions the jinn first because they were created before the humans. Wal jannah khalaqnahu min qablu. The jinn we created before. So they, cre they are more older than us. They are more ancient than us. Their creation was much before us. Then you'll be asking that then why did Allah mention in the first فَبِأَيَّ أَلَىٰ يَغَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ first and then خَلَقَ الْجَانِ Why did Allah mention that we have created insan from uh, noise, you know, sounding clay 
And why did we create the jinn? So there Allah is mentioning the insan first, the human first, then the jinn. Just to mention the honor, the greatness. Although insan, the humans were created later, but they are more honorable in the sight of Allah. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have given honor, we have given nobility to the son of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created insan in the best of all forms, the most beautiful manner. So Allah says, يَا مَعْشَغَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Or the group of jinn and ins, إِنْ اِسْتَطَعْتُمْ If you are able to أَنْ تَنْفُذُوا مِنْ أَقْطَارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَاللَّهُمْ That you can pass through the universe of the heavens, you know, the creation of the heavens and the earth. Fun for do, then go, go through it. If you are go, if you are able to go through the areas, the zones of the heavens and the earth, akhtar, then go. But one thing you remember, la tan fuduna illa bi sultan, wherever you will go to. You cannot go anywhere without the kingdom of Allah, without the permission of Allah, without the you know, authority of Allah. One meaning is that whatever you want to know in the heaven and the earth, you will not be able to know except what Allah has permitted for you to know. Another thing is the literal meaning. <coughs> what I have given just now. There was a, an engineer who used to from the Newcastle area <coughs> in the 80s, 90s he used to be working in the Middle East. He used to get these contracts for two or three years. Engineer. So he went there to Egypt once upon a time for two years and as he used to work with the locals there in some of the companies then he used to keep on taunting and having a go at the locals there that you people seem to be useless look at us you know how much discovery we have then we have made it till the moon in those days I'm talking about uh, now Allah knows whether they actually made it till the moon or not but until 2009 or 2008, everybody thought that they actually made it till the moon. You I was in America in 2009, and uh, all of a sudden, one day after Fajr, is like a big, oh. Now the news is saying they, not, they didn't really make it till the moon, did they make it, did they not make it? We were being fooled around for the last 30 years, what's happening here now? So anyway, so <coughs> until then, people thought that they made it till the moon. Allah knows best whether they actually did or not. But so they keep, this person keeps on taunting at them that you know you Middle Eastern people, you Arabs, useless. What have you done? What discovery have you done? Where have you been? What have you achieved? Look at us. Look at the West. We have been up till the moon. We have discovered this, we have discovered that, you know, we have some satellite here, satellite there. So those people they used to just listen and they never used to say anything to him. They said, just one of those person, he just, and I used to keep on pushing it. And I used to keep on, day in, day out, I used to just taunt them and make fun out of them and everything. And then one day, one of our managers, he said, you know, you, you keep on taunting us, making fun out of us. Our Quran has mentioned this over 1400 years ago. It's already prophesied this. So I got a bit of a shock. That person is saying, I was shocked. So we thought that we discovered it before anybody else, but the Quran has already prophesied it. So I kept on asking the person after that, where is it in the Quran? Show me, show me, where is it in the Quran? Where is it? So don't worry, I'll show you, I'll show you, don't worry. I'll, I'll show you one day. So like that he will try to build the passion of the person. 
That person will now feel uneasy. Where is it in the Quran? So said, no, no, just wait, just wait. I'll let you know. Just wait. So the person is now really passionate. I really want to know. I, I need to know this. I need to know this. After quite a few days of him now building his passion and becoming really uneasy, they took him to the bookshop. He didn't just gift him the Quran for free. He said, no, you buy with your own money. Then you read. Sometimes free becomes free. You just, it's, it's for free anyway. I didn't spend anything on it. What's the point? When the person gets something for free, he doesn't value it as much. But when he pays, then he values it a little bit more. So, took him to the bookshop. Look for the English translation of the Quran. Made him buy it. Said, which one would you prefer? Look, there are these one or two different types of translation. Which one would you like? Made him pay for it. You pay for it now. And now you look for it and let me know. Now here's the Quran. Now you look for it and let me know. So he didn't tell him as well that there he is. He is in the Quran. Now person now he's reading cover to cover, cover to cover, cover. Where is it? Where is it? Passionate. He went through the Quran once. He went through the Quran twice. Couldn't find the exact verse. He said, Allah was reading the Quran. Allah opened the doors of guidance for me. With whatever intention a person will read the Quran, guidance he will receive. <coughs> but the problem today is that we don't, you know, read the Quran. You know, Allah is talking about a certain thing and then all of a sudden Allah changes the topic to something else. And then Allah is talking about something else and all of a sudden the topic changes again. It's not as if Allah is talking about His creation for a whole chapter and then Allah is just talking about Musa a. for a whole chapter and then Allah is talking about... No. Allah is talking about Musa a. then all of a sudden something else comes along, then something else. It's like every few verses the theme is changing. The topic is changing. Because that's the human mindset. He likes a bit of a change. And this is also an amazing science of the Qur'an that how does this verse link with this verse? Why did Allah put this verse before this verse? Why did Allah put this verse after this verse? This is another topic, Rabt Bain al ayat The collaboration between the verses of the Qur'an. Why did Allah, why is this surah before this surah? Why is this surah after this surah? This is <coughs> amazing. That's another science on its own. So, I said, I started reading the Quran and subhanAllah, and it's just so amazing. It has to be from Allah. You know, sometimes you, know, you listen to the people who, mashallah, they have come into Islam through different ways. And you listen to their stories and subhanAllah it's just so amazing how and what became the means of them coming into Islam. <coughs> so there's, uh, I always mention this many times, there's one person, you can, you know, men write it on YouTube. Australian person becoming Muslim and it's funny, just put funny as well. You must have seen it or you can look at it. So it's quite funny, you know, he mentioned his story in about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. It's, how f it's quite a funny story how he became Muslim. So one of the amazing points he mentions, he said that I became convinced that Quran is the right, you know, the book from Allah. Islam is the right religion. And I made my mind that I'm going to become Muslim now. And then I said, okay, let me just give that last push. Just, just that icing on the cake, cherry at the top. I was sitting in a room and this, this me and you know the Quran in front of me and I closed the Quran and I said, Oh Lord, I know you are there. Just give me that one little sign, something, just to, just that little last push. And then I became total silence, I became quiet to look around, to see, to hear anything, nothing happened. So I was very, very Disappointed. How come nothing's happening? Then I, you know, it's quite funny. So said, then I said, Oh Lord, you still got a chance. Still waiting. It could just be a bird chirping or something. It could just be a, you know, the glass 
closing or something. So I, nothing happened, still nothing happened. I, I felt a bit disappointed, so then I said, okay, let me just open the Quran. And then the next verse that came right in front of me, Allah said, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ The Quran that we have sent down, is that not enough of a sign to you? You're asking for more sign. So, wow, this is powerful now. Allah is talking to me directly. <laughs> said, is this not enough? You want more sign? Quran not enough sign for you? So, that's it. That was the last push. I have to become a Muslim. <coughs> so, it's just so amazing, you know. How Allah talks. You know, once we understand the Quran, then we will realize how Allah talks to us. You know, we are going through some some problem in our life and everything, and we come to the masjid, and then all of a sudden the Imam is reading. Allah is talking to us directly. The answers are there in that surah which the Imam is all of a sudden reading. It's just so amazing. So I started reading the Quran, reading the Quran, reading the Quran. But I found guidance. I told the person, tell me later which verse that is. I've been looking for you for the last two months, but first make me Muslim now. First, I want to take Shahada. I want to become a believer in this Quran. And then you can tell me whenever you want to tell me about which verse that is. So he became Muslim and then they said, okay, which verse was it? So he said, this verse. Ya ma'ashaq al-jinni wal-ins. Wherever you will go in the heaven and the earth, any loan in the heaven and the earth you will go. One of the translations is لَا illa bi sultan. You will not be able to go out, go pass through the zones, except that the kingdom will still belong to Allah. Sultan, one of the meaning is kingdom. So wherever you will go, you will still be in the kingdom of Allah. That person then he came back. He was just in a one or two year contract. Then he came back to UK. He came back to Newcastle. He went to one of the local masjid. And he told the people, I am a Muslim now. And then the people, they announced his Islam to a local. And then the other masjid found out. And now they're fighting. No, why do you go to that masjid? Come to this masjid. So say, in order to get out of all this chaotic situation, that person is fighting. No, go, don't go there. Come here. Why do you have to go there? I said, let me get out of here. So say, I sold everything in Newcastle, went to the highlands of... Scotland. I don't want to mention the name of the exact place where he is. Otherwise, we'll all go knocking on his door. He's still there. So he said he's living in the highlands of Scotland. Bought a little cottage in the farm somewhere with a few sheep. He grazes a few goats here and there. Does his salah. Very hardly few Muslims, about 50, 100, 200 Muslims. One little masjid. And that's his life. The hadith of Bukhari where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the best of time when a person, in order to safeguard his iman, he will go up to the mountain with a few sheep. So maybe he read this hadith. So this is the guidance through the Quran. <coughs> that uh, Allah is mentioning that. Oh, the, you know, nowadays, the satellite that is being sent, It could just go, just like this, or some explanation, some ulama dimension, that it is actually being done through the energetical power, which is the jinn. So the jinn are taking the satellite into space, into here and there. So where humans cannot go, jinn can go. Humans, they can't go so far, but jinns are going. But Allah says, you are still in the kingdom of Allah. You cannot do anything without the authority of Allah. So we say that, how did this satellite reach there? How did this happen there? How did this go there? So human is doing a lot of things as well. But the collaboration is also with the jinns as well. So a lot of things are happening together. Allah knows best. Then Allah says, يُغْسَلُ عَلَيْكُمَا شُوَاظٌ مِّن نَّارٌ Don't think just because oh jinn, you've been where the humans couldn't go. I know humans, you've been 
where nobody before you could go and you think that you are ruling and you think you've got everything under control يُغْسَلُ عَلَيْكُمَا شُوَاظٌ مِّنْ نَاغ It will be sent upon both of you flame from the fire both of you will be put on flames smokeless flame وَنُحَاسٌ a fire which flame that has smoke فَلَا تَنْتَصِغَانَ then you will never be helped either this is a warning for Jahannam and the Akhirah because the next verses which are coming after this verse where Allah starts the third topic of Surah Rahman which is about Jahannam so this could mean in the Akhirah that you will be burnt in the Akhirah now the common thing that if you take Jahannam then how is it that the jinn that are created from fire how will they burn in the fire? The answer is very simple. We have been created from clay, but somebody throws a rock at us, somebody throws a stone, a brick at us, and our head will be smashed. Like, uh, the same way, you know, jinn have been created from fire, of course, Allah will make it as a punishment for them. Allah will put them in there and that same fire that they were created from will become a punishment for them just like throwing bricks and rocks at a human pains the person in fact he pains the person so much although it's the same thing they are created from same clay same soil but if uh, if you just throw sand at a person it doesn't it doesn't hurt the person but then you mix it with water and then you make it hard and then you throw that same thing to the person he hurts just like a person you know he was make he was asking a question that grape grapes on its own is halal vinegar etc all these things on its own are halal but then how come when it is processed and you go through a process then it becomes haram and it becomes part of intoxication wine so same example is being given soil on its own it doesn't hurt you water on its own doesn't hurt you but when you join it up together and you dry it out and you make it hard and then you throw it it hurts you it's the same way you know, when the process that you do it through so either this is regarding Jahannam that this world is not the be all and the end all your discoveries may take you far but it has an end Everything is going to finish. The control of everything. Sulaiman alayhi salam, he controlled the world. You know, he made dua to Allah. Rabbi habli mulk la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. The jinns, they like to have control of things. And they like to make the humans scared of things. They like to scare the humans. And the worst thing is that we humans fall for it. That's the worst. They're there trying to play with us. They're there trying to make us scared that we actually fall for it. Oh, the, the guy is wet as well. Passed out. He's just trying to scare you. The thing Suleiman al Salam had was that he had full control of them. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is performing Salah. He says in the Hadith of Bukhari, in Ifritam min al jinn Tafallat Ali al Bariha. I was performing salah. A jinn started, you know, indulging and started uh, occupying me from my salah, try to take my attention away. So you can break my salah. Liyakhtat Ali al salah. So I turned, I kept my focus in salah. And I tried to ignore, and then Allah put, gave me control over the jinn. فَأَمْكَنَنِي اللَّهُ مِنْ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning this. Allah gave me control over that jinn. So I wanted to tie that jinn into one of the pillars of the masjid. I said, okay, now he's under control. He's been caught. Now let's teach him a lesson. So I wanted to tie him on one of the pillars of the masjid. So then the children can teach him a bit of a lesson. But then I remembered one thing. What did I remember? I remember the dua of Sulaiman al-Islam. 
فذكرت دعوة أخي سليمان رب اغفر لي وهب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي والله give me such a kingdom give me such a dominion which nobody after me can have and part of his kingdom, part of his control was controlling the jinn. So out of respect for the dua of my brother Suleiman, I released the jinn. I released it. <coughs> Nowadays we have people who try to control jinn, everything. It's not a good thing, to be honest. Let them do their own thing, you do your own thing. Why do you have to control each other? That's a Pharaohic mentality of control, Fir'aun type of mentality, you know, Fir'aun wanted to control the Bani Israel and he wanted to control not only the lives and the actions of Bani Israel, he even wanted to control the mindset of the Bani Israel, what they are thinking. How dare they think like Musa Ali Salam, they don't think like me. And that's the media today. How dare the Muslims think otherwise? How dare these people think otherwise? They should all be thinking the same way what the media wants them to think. But we are humans. Allah has created us. We can have our own minds on things. We can come to our own conclusion. We can make dua to Allah. Wallah, Allahumma adina al-haqqa haqqa. Wallah, make the truth appealing to me. You know, the world has become very deceiving today. Where sometimes Something which is totally right looks like wrong. Exactly what the Prophet ﷺ mentions. That a time will come. A time will come when you will look at good things as evil and evil things as good. That's exactly what is happening today. Well, the, the right thing, the true things are being looked down upon, frowned upon. People look at it as strange. And things which are totally evil, totally wrong, people say, oh no, how can it be wrong? It's right, what's wrong about it? That's the world today, very deceitful world. <coughs> that is where we get dua, that is where we get the greatest of Allah. Oh Allah, open up the right thing in front of me. Oh Allah, you know, that brings us to another story of a person and in the, inshallah with this we finish. My father, you know, uh, he was mentioning once that he was at the airport somewhere once. I don't know if it's his own story or he is narrating from somebody else. So they were at the airport once. And, uh, and mashallah, they were dressed as Muslims. They were going somewhere. And they realized that there was another person there. He was, he was just dressed not <laughs> as a Muslim, but just a normal person. So they, they never knew he was a Muslim or not. But after a while, that person, he said, what time is Salah? So now they were shocked. This person doesn't look like a Muslim, but he's a Muslim. He's asking us for Salah time and everything. So now they started engaging with him. They said, okay, so he seemed, mashallah, you're Muslim. How are you? you know, what's your name? Where are you from? How did you become Muslim? So then he started mentioning his story. He said, I said, I went through a phase in my life where I was a Christian, but then I thought that, no, it's not the right religion. It's not the right, right religion. So I was looking for another religion, looking that which could be the right religion. So I became a Muslim, thinking that this may be the right religion. So I was, you know, I became Muslim for a little while. I started studying here and there. I started interacting with Muslims. Then after a while I thought, maybe this is not the right religion. I need to look for another religion. So then he became a Hindu. Then he became a Hindu for a little while. He started studying a little bit, interacting with the Hindus, everything. They said, no, this is not the right. Then he became a Sikh or something, another religion. So like this, he changed quite a few religions. And then he seemed to have had enough of this. So then one day in the night, he just became you know, very emotional and he just started crying and praying that, Oh God, whoever you are, wherever you are, please, please guide me to the right religion. How many religions am I going to change? And I kept on praying and kept on crying and then all very emotional. And then all of a sudden, a light came in front of me saying that Islam is the right religion. Become Muslim. 
So now, with full conviction, I became Muslim. Although I became Muslim before, but that was just to test it out. But now, this time, it was like a full conviction. See, my family beated me up so much. I had to go through so much. They, they threw me out of the house, but I said no. Last time when I became Muslim, they didn't do anything to me because they thought I was going through a phase. But now they realize, no, this person has now become more strong, more firm. I've been through a lot because I'm still a Muslim. That is why, you know, many people they come, many couples they come, they say that, you know, many people they go to school, they go to college, and that's the community we are living in where they end up going out with the, somebody from the other religion. And that time they don't realize because they're still young, they're still not as matured or something, you know, they're still testing things out. And then life moves on, and then they realize when they have children, that, oh no, one is not a Muslim, one is a Muslim, now you know, children are going in the other direction, then their eyes open. When Mufti Taqi you know, he mentioned that uh, and this person in Germany or somewhere he wrote to him that uh, you know, I got married to a sister from Christianity but that time I never gave much of an importance I said it's fine you know what's a big deal about it but then I realized it was a big deal when I came home one day and she's teaching Christianity to my children so I said, no, now it seems serious. I started ha telling her, and she started having a go at me. She said, no, well, no, I'm gonna, this is, this is the right thing to me. So what should I do? We're getting a lot of arguments. I don't want my children to go in that direction. So Mufti Taqi Sahib said, we don't need to argue with anyone. We don't need to say anything to anyone. Mufti Taqi Sahib has written a book, What is Christianity? So he said, tell her to read this book if she can. And tell her, look, I'm not going to say anything to you. Every day, once a day, anytime, just pray, oh God, guide me to the right way. That's it. Just once a day. Anytime, it could be in the morning, in the evening. Just sincerely just say, oh God, guide me to the right way. <clears throat> you know, this is uh, experienced action. That if a person sincerely asks Allah for guidance, he doesn't even need to say Allah, he can just say, Oh God, whoever you are, wherever you are, no. just guide me to the right way. Within 40 days, Allah will guide him. Within 40 days. <clears throat> she said, one day we were coming back from shopping or something, then all of a sudden she starts crying on the middle of the, like, on the way. That's crying, very emotional. I said, what's happened? I stopped the car, I said, everything okay, what's happening? She said, no, no, no. I want to become Muslim right now. I'm saying like, a few weeks ago, you were arguing about, to me about it. You were not accepting anything. Now all of a sudden, I became really happy. I took a street to the masjid, became a Muslim, mashallah. So that, <coughs> ya Hadi, ya Rahim, ya Hadi, ya Rahim, ya Hadi, ya Rahim. Or the guider, or the most merciful, or the guider, or the most merciful. You can either say it in English, you can either say it in Arabic. We have experienced this with many people of other faith. We just tell them, you know, we go to old people's home, we go to hospitals, people are in the last few weeks of their life, people are in the last few moments of their life, their family have neglected them, their children don't want to know them. They want somebody, they want something in life, they want to fill in that gap. This will fill that gap. Ya Hadi Ya Rahim. May Almighty Allah first of all give me the understanding, give all of us the understanding. Amin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala rasulina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.